Today we're going to talk about Django Waffle. Django Waffle is a feature flipper which allows you to define a set of conditions for which a flag or a feature should be active. And then it lets you act on that flag in any number of ways. The idea behind what we're going to do today is add a page to an existing example project that is only going to be visible for now to our authenticated users. If the user is not authenticated, they're just going to get a 404 as if it isn't even there, so they are none the wiser. We're starting like we normally do by defining a URL, a view, and a template up front. I went ahead and created the template in the background so we don't need to worry about it since it's just basic HTML. To install Django Awful, we do what we normally do. We start with a pip install, in this case pip install Django Awful, then add the name of our app to our installed apps portion of our settings file. In this case, we will use Waffle for our app name. In Django Waffle, there are three kinds of ways to toggle features. Flags, switches, and samples. Flags are highly configurable and what we will focus on in this video. Switches are like a boolean, either it is on or off, no other options. Sample lets you define a new feature and how many people get to see that at one time, from 0% to 100%. In your code, all three work the same, so we're just going to focus on the flag. But the only minor exception is the flag requires a request object, whereas the others don't. When we create a new flag, we just add it to the database, and the first thing we do is we need to give it a name. The name is important because it is what we're actually going to use in our code, and in our case, we're just going to give it the name of information. After that, we have the dropdown for everyone, and the three options to determine how the flag is used. Unknown means that it should work like we expect, where the code dictates where the feature is used or not. Yes means that everyone gets to use the feature regardless of anything else, and no means no one gets to use the feature. Most of the time, you're going to want to have it in the unknown. Next is the more interesting part. We have super users, staff, and authenticated. These are an initial way of determining who gets to use a feature or not. In this case, we're going to select authenticated users because that fits our scenario. And if you really want to get into fine-grained detail of who can use a feature and who can't, you can choose groups or specific users. This is very useful for early testing of features in your project but when you only want to have a select few people, give it a try. And that's it. That is the essence of how you define a feature flag. Switches and samples are similar, and I encourage you to explore those, but they have a lot less configuration, so it should be simpler. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to doing some code. Since our flag is created, we need to edit our view so it knows to respond when our information flag is active. We do this with a simple decorator, which we first need to import. Then we simply add the decorator above our view function. With that in place, let's go ahead and give it a shot in the browser. Since we're still logged in, we can verify that we can hit the view just fine and see our information page. Next, we need to log out so we can verify that the flag gives us a 404, and the easiest way to do that is through our admin panel. And now that we're logged out, we can go try to go back to our info URL, and as expected, we get a 404. The final part we're going to look at is using a flag in our views themselves, without wrapping the whole view in a flag. We can do this using a function that returns true or false on if the flag should be used for this current user or not. To start, we're going to add a bit of code to our template that will display the data key to our template and what is going to determine the data in that key is a flag in our view. In our import, we're going to import flag is active as a function to use in our get context data of our main view. We're simply going to call the flag is active in an if statement and we're going to pass a request object of our view into that and then the name of our flag, in this case information. Then we simply assign what we want the data to be inside of this if, and follow that with an else for the data we want to use if the flag is inactive for our current user. Now let's actually take a look at what this looks like in the browser. And as you can see, we have the text flag is inactive since we're not logged in. That's it. That's pretty much how you use Django Waffle.
There's two things I didn't talk about. That's the Django template tags, which are super simple to figure out based on what you've seen so far. And then I also encourage you to explore how you use Waffle in JavaScript. It's actually very simple and very convenient.